Today, we want to continue looking at linear functions, which are patterns of repeated addition. And we've talked about uh, the form that we want that they, we want them to take, where y is equal to b when x is equal to zero, and y is increasing by the rise every run units. So our standard is y equals b when x equals zero and y is increasing by the rise every run units. So usually we start here with x equals zero. And in this scenario, we can write the equation y equals start with b, and we can add the rise, and we'll multiply by the number of times we add the rise, and the step size is the run, so this is how we, we can think about linear functions. Start with b and add the rise a bunch of times. It's repeated addition, so we're going to write that with, summarize that with multiplication, and then we just need to multiply by the number of steps that we're taking. But the usual thing to do is to summarize, is to not write it in this strange way and summarize the rise and the run as the slope. So we say that the slope is the rise divided by the run. And then we rewrite our equation as y is equal to b plus the rise over the run. times x. So the slope is how much y is changing every one unit. The slope is how y is changing every one unit. So we want to remember that the slope is how y is changing every one unit. And this would be the normal way that we write a linear equation, y equals b plus the rise over the run times x. So what we want to change now is what if we're not starting when x is 0? What if instead of the y-intercept, b0, we have some other point? What if we don't know what's going on when x equals 0? So Let's look at an example. I'm going to make a three line um, table of values. One's going to be the number of steps. So I still want to track the number of steps. And then I'm going to have a line for x and a line for y as normal. And as usual, I'm not going to leave myself enough space in the x line to write the little, like, go from like one to five, and then I have a little plus four. But that's just bad planning on my part. So we're going to write a different description. We're not going to know what's going on at zero. So I'm going to say, write a description. Let's start write a description. Let's say that y is equal to um, 12 when x is equal to 1, and let's say y is increasing by 4 every 3 units. So, the, the way we're describing how things are changing hasn't changed. We have a rise and a run. Our slope, we can write as 4 thirds 
So we've got all this part sorted out already. This says that our rise is four, positive four to be, because I usually attach the direction to the rise. And then our run is three. So we can write the slope, which is rise over run as four over three, because our rise is four and our run is three. But we don't know what's going on when x is zero. So if I fill in the table of values, I'm going to start with 1 and 12. We know that y is increasing by 4. So after 12, we'll hit 16, and then 20, and then 24, and 28, because our rise is 4. So here's our repeated addition, plus 4 plus four, plus four, plus four. We can go backwards. What came before 12 in steps of four is gonna be an eight. From eight to 12 is still a plus four. And this is happening every three units, but we're not starting off at zero. So instead of having zero, three, six, and nine, we're gonna have one and one plus three is going to be 4. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 3 is 10, plus 3 is 13. And if we go backwards, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So we still see the constant step size of 3. So we still see that run of three for a rise of four. But we're starting off when x equals one. So instead of looking at negative three, zero, three, six, nine, and 12, everything shifted one unit over. So negative two, positive one, four, seven, 10, and 13. Everybody shift, everything shifted over one because we're starting at one and not zero. Let's look above and track the number and look at the number of steps. So we're th if we're thinking of 12, 112 as the place that we start, that's where we took zero steps. So that's where we're thinking this is the zeroth step. Start always goes in quotes because it goes forever in both directions. And then three units later is one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, and then going to the left, here we are at negative one steps. So now we're looking at the relationship between the step number and the x. We know that the size of the step is adjusted by the dividing by run part. Notice that if we had just, um, if we had a starting at zero, if we started at zero, oops, not stat at zero, then we'd have a negative three, a zero, a three, a six, a nine, and a 12. But we're starting at one, So everything, we just added one to all these x's, or all these, what would have been the x's. Negative three plus one is negative two, and we're just adding one. So to get from a start at one to a start at zero, if I subtract one from all these x's, Then that'll make them all. Then that'll make the number of steps look like zero, three, six, nine, and twelve. So what's going on is we are subtracting one. So 
So let's write our equation. Let's think about how our equation should be written. Because we want to have that same format, start at B and increase by rise over run a bunch of times. So we're going to start off at 12. We're going to increase by the rise every run units And if we start off at zero, then we do this a bunch of times. We just write times X to say a bunch of times, but we're starting off at one. So we're not gonna be counting. We can't just count by X. We can't just plug in the X. We're plugging in the X's one unit before. We have to subtract one from the X's to get the three, six, nine, and 12. So I just write, well, let's just subtract one from the X's. Oh, when I wrote rise and run, then I have numbers for this. So when X is one, that's when we don't add any rise. That's why it has to say X minus one. When x is equal to one, that means the number of times we've added four thirds is zero. With this minus one in place, when x is one, that means we've added four thirds zero times. So that's how to indicate a different starting place when we're not starting off at zero. But we like the structure to be the same. Start off at B or start off at 12 and increase by four thirds every unit. And this says starting at one, because that means when X is one, that X minus one is equal to zero. That means we've added four, four thirds zero times. So what this looks like in general, if we wanna do an infinite number of problems right at the beginning, and we wanna combine the rise and uh, every run unit, so a step size that isn't one and a starting place that isn't zero. So we got step size isn't one starting so if we combine these to where the step size isn't one and the starting x isn't zero we could say i need values i need a place to start i'm going to call it h and k so let's suppose that y is equal to k when x equals zero. Oh, sorry exactly what i said we were trying to change Y is K when X equals H and Y is increasing by rise every run units. Here's our new starting place. Then the equation that we write We'll say y is equal to k because that's where it's where y starts and then we write down what's happening to y we're increasing by the rise and because it's a linear function we can just divide by the every run units and since we're starting at h instead of 
Wrong color. I don't think my navy blue and black pens show up differently on the video or even on the notes when I scan them, but for my own mind, subtract the starting AX to make the part in parentheses zero. So now instead of looking at it as zero B with a rise over run, we're looking at starting at HK with a rise over run. Notice that this is completely backwards compatible with our um, Y equals B plus MX form. Because if Y equals B when X equals zero, then this, term, this factor looks like X minus zero or just X and this, looks, this K looks like a B. So it's completely backwards compatible. And it has, and both forms have the same format. Start here, do this a bunch of times. The weirdo way to look at this, and if we we're gonna put the leech lens on this, we'll say start with K and add the rise a bunch of times. And then a bunch of times is multiplied by X. Normally we'd say X over the run to change the run changes the step size. And now to make sure that the number of times we add the rise is zero, when x is equal to h, we can subtract the h from the numerator. So all that stuff a bunch of times is stuff that we have to do to the h. So in parentheses is the x minus h over the run. That's the number of steps. Then we multiply by the rise and then we add the k. Let's take a look at the order of operations if we write the expression the linear function this way. Let's look at what happens to the x. This turns and this is how we turn an x into a y. First, we subtract h. Second, we divide by the run. Then comes the multiplication. We multiply by the rise. And finally, we add the K. Everything that happens before the rise is just to getting us, getting us to count the number of steps from zero. Subtracting H means that the steps are gonna start off at zero. Dividing by the run tells us this, how much we're gonna do, of, uh, how big the steps are, how much X it takes to get to one full rise. Then we get to multiply by the rise and then we add the K. So these first two lines are establishing the step size. Multiplying by the rise, multiplication is repeated addition. And then this is where things start. If you recall, when we were practicing reading expressions, to read what, an expre what the expression is doing, we read the expression backwards. So y starts off at k, and increases by the rise a bunch of times, and then the rest is setting up the rise step. We divide by the run and subtract the h, which is the start. Now, from an algebra standpoint, it is crazy to think about linear functions in this way. We have slope intercept form, we have point slope form, and if all we were ever gonna do is linear functions, then maybe that's where we should stop. But if we're gonna go on to more um, a different functions, if I wanna replace this increasing by the rise, my repeated addition with repeated multiplication, then it's more useful to think about it this way. This is better moving forward. 
this is good enough for now. Any questions? I know Yoda wouldn't approve of this because Yoda's like, oh, I'm always looking to the future and thinking about where he is, what he is doing. And I realize that right now, where we are is algebra class and what we are doing is algebra. And here I am looking to the future. But the future is like a week away because we got spring break and then we come back and we need to start talking about exponential functions. And I'm just, all I'm gonna do for an exponential function is change increase by the rise to multiply by some multiplier. All we're gonna do is say, why is K when X is H and Y is multiplied by, I need something for the multiplier. I'm gonna use a capital M because it's like a super slope. So all that we want to change is increasing by rise, which we encode with plus rise, to multiplied by m, which we're going to write as times m. And I'm going to use the second format here. So y is equal to, well, we start off at k. And the action we're performing is we multiply by m. And we're doing a repeated multiplication by m. We're multiplying by m a bunch of times, so I have to use an exponent to the, then the exponent on the M is the number of times that we do this. Well, it's happening every run unit, so we fix the step size by taking X and dividing it by the run. And we're starting off at H, not zero, so we adjust the starting by saying X, oh, I can do that in green, because H is in green. All we did was change the plus rise to a times m, m for multiplier. Now we can read a lot more functions. We can start them wherever we want and we can determine the step size to be whatever we want. Sometimes the step size, uh, we want to adjust the step size to send a different message, even though we can say, we want to say the exact same thing. If something is increasing by 8% per unit, that will double every seven units, I think. Oh no, 10 units. Is it 10 units? Yeah, if something's increasing by, maybe it's nine. Nine. If something is increasing by 8% every unit, it's going to double every nine units. But listen to the impact of the following statements. The number of zombies is increasing by 8% per day. The number of zombies is doubling every nine days. Both of those things are indicating the same exponential growth. One of them sounds worse than the other because 8% sounds small depending on how far along you are in your investment life. 8% sounds small, but doubling sounds frightening. But if something is increasing by 8% per day, it will double in nine days. If it's increasing by 8% per year, it'll double in nine years. The length of the interval is not the relevant part here. What that means in this example is that if y is equal to 100 zombies to start and we're multiplying by 1.08 to the x, this is the same as starting off with 100 and multiplying by 2, which sounds scary, every nine days.
Here's how we encode those two sentences in math. Oh, there we go. I just finished exponential functions. I'm just kidding. We'll do this when we get back from spring break. But I wanted to frighten you going to spring break with how fast zombies multiply. Any questions? Comments? Speaking of zombies, I don't know how long The Walking Dead has been on. I kind of stopped watching after season five, but uh, shouldn't they be running out of zombies? Because on the show, there's like fresh zombies versus like zombies that have been around for a long time. Because it looks like the zombies are still subject to decay. They're just also empowered to like walk around and chomp on people. So they're still decaying. And it seems like in the show that it's been years. So they're like the original zombies must be have decayed to the point where they can't get around anymore. And I know the point of the show is not the zombies, but I don't, and, and I don't know if in the last couple of seasons they've addressed this, but shouldn't we be running out of zombies pretty soon? Anyway. Maybe I need to watch that show. Actually, I don't want to watch the show again. Maybe I just need to read some synopsis of the episodes. All right. That's going to do it for this week. That's going to do it for this week until the following week. Remember, next week is spring break, so we're not going to have any meetings. There will be some updates on Canvas, but it won't be time critical. That'll just be me. That'll just represent anything that shows up new on Canvas will just be me getting caught up, like hopefully y'all are getting caught up over the spring break. That's going to do it for this week. Everybody have a nice spring break. I'll see you on the following Monday, and thanks for playing.